What's up, everybody? It's Joe LaPuma. You are listening. You are watching The Complex Sneaker Show. As always, I'm joined by my two co-hosts, my two friends to my right, Matt Welty. Battered, beaten, but still here. <laughs> still here. <laughs> to my left, Mr. Brendan Dunn. I'm here. We're here. Snowy, snowy day in New York. We trekked into the office. The office is basically closed except for this operation. Quite barren. But we're here. All conditions gear. I we're here. Like, I feel like some of us worst had fit. <laughs> worst fit. <laughs> you're listen, getting ahead of the narrative. You're calling this the worst fit you've ever put on on this worst podcast. Worst fit. Nothing. The the items. The items <laughs> separate are fine. Uh huh. Together, not great. Okay. But my man showed up in the Brett Favre fit. <laughs> <laughs> Look at well, the Wrangler with, jeans. Canadian. I love oh, yeah. this fit. No doubt. Showed Look it on up. a snow day. You decided to flex yeah. on everyone. Showed, showed up in the Toby Keith. Fit. For real, put piece. the camera on. Beyonce dropping a country album. All of a sudden, you're getting yeehaw. <laughs> Let the record show, though. Huh? Everyone's getting country now, and I've been getting country for a minute. So. Oh wow! <laughs> Look at what made. Th What's the shirt? What's the t-shirt you have on under uh, this uh, all denim getup? This, I think uh, it was a little not uh, dedication to you, but it's Brooks and Dunn. Done. Okay. Yeah. Missing the e on there, but yeah. I. <laughs> Look at the Wrangler. <laughs> the Wrang the. Are the jeans uh, Wrangler or Uniglow? Hey, you know what? To logo secret? No, I, that's what. I, lean, I, I just leaned <laughs> into it. Purple label ish. With logo the logo secret? No, I just leaned into it. If Keep people want to like, I'm yeah, like no, if people want to, if people want to talk crap and then be like, <laughs> no, hey. this is a great fit. <laughs> no, it, no, it's fun. No, <laughs> hold on. No, crap. I just leaned into it because I said, hey, if people want to be like, remember I wore the the Joe Fresh Goods, uh, the blue pair. Oh yeah, with the jeans, with that. the baggier jeans. But I didn't realize if you so if you take any uh, sneaker photo from like top down, if mm -hmm. your jeans aren't super slim, mm -hmm. people are gonna think that they're baggier than they mm -hmm. are just because mm -hmm. the way they stack. Mm -hmm. And that one photo made the rounds. You got like, fried. I don't think I got fried, but uh, like got fried. Uh, Careful. people people just say, hey, look look at uh, look at this guy in in the Wrangler ass jeans, and I was <laughs> like, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna wear the Wrangler. Shoe fits. He, he, he has like a Wrangler sweatsuit on right now. So you said you're gonna <laughs> lean into it. Yeah, but I feel like leaning is not a great look for you right now because your back's a little yeah. tore up. Oh. Yeah, I had to spot him a little behind the scenes. <laughs> I, I, wish we, I, I, I wish had, we had to the tie. Cameras I, rolling. I basically had to tie your shoes. But for I, you. It was such a tender moment before we started the shoot. We were all sitting on set. And Welty said, Joe, can you do me a solid? Yep. Anything. And this is why at the top of the show you say, my two co-hosts, my two friends. Yep. It, it, it signifies the bond that we have. But Welty said, Joe, can you do me a solid? Can you pull the tongue on my shoes? Yes. Welty is so bruised and achy right now yeah. that Joe got on one knee. Threw my back out. And, and fixed ever so delicately the tongue on his New Balance Thanks. 9 yeah, and 8. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's just the stuff you don't see. What happened to your back? Uh, I mean, we're back, but talk about yeah, the back. Yeah, no, just... Went a little hard one day, and then next day was in the just, gym. Yeah, just was warming up a lift, super light, like ninety pounds, and uh, no <laughs> light that, work. No, that's just like it would it'd be like the lightest weight you'd put on to warm up, or and you would not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Most no, most people would. You, I'm, I pretty positive, Brendan, that you could lift ninety five pounds. Thank so. you, friends, okay. once again. And sometimes when your back goes, it just, dude, just one power clean, and my back just said, "Hey, buddy, we're not doing this today." Nope. Right. And the whole thing just. So how many days off now? You have to take some time off. You have to know your limits. Yeah. And then so I knew my limits. And then I took a bunch of days off. Went and saw our good friend Trinidad James. You went to the pop-up? Yep. Wow. I couldn't make it. Yeah. Uh, he was selling some shoes and memorabilia from Full Size Run. Wow. Days collection. Did uh, you support? I didn't buy anything. Okay. But what yeah. was he it, selling from? Full size, just one. like some shoes he had worn on camera, oh, okay. etc. Those uh, Air Force Ones he wore, Brendan, with the light up swoosh. Yeah, Jay's are dead custom, yep. right? Yep. LED equipment on there. I love that. I actually saw Trinidad this weekend as well. I was at the Pata pop up for the Marshalls collaboration they launched. This was such a beautiful Saturday to me because I, I was on vacation last week. I just came back from Curacao, enjoying the Caribbean sun. How, do, do I look at all tan? No, uh, not really. Not okay. as much. But okay. you, were, you were, yeah. You, you're also like wearing like pants and like, right? Am I wrong? Yeah, I'm, I don't. You know, I'm not a big shorts. Wait, wearer. you didn't wear shorts on a Caribbean vacation? I, ha I wore sh some shorts, but also I was there for a wedding. You know, I'm not gonna show you up picture, to a wedding. You picture like Brendan like shirtless on a beach with a pair of chinos on. I don't see. I don't see him in you're shorts a lot. Here at all I don't denim. see him in shorts a lot. What I will tell it's, you it's though, calculated. You know, this guy. When I come back from a vacation or a long trip, mm -hmm. I need three days to recover. Mm -hmm. This guy, 
How was Mixie? Comes off the jet right off from his vacation, the wedding, wherever he was. Curacao. There we go. He hits downtown like he's Michael Rubin at the Fanatics party. <laughs> you see how many pictures he's in yeah, in 24 that. hours? Abdul. You would have thought that he was at the Super Bowl at the Mixie at the two days. One day he's in street clothes. Mm-hmm. Scars Pizza, I'm sure, was on the itinerary, was it? We skipped Scars. Okay. Then the next day, what do you did? A Sunday run fun club with the, the Nike old, Tech? Old man run OMRC, club. You, see the, you see the hoodie. Make Sky. Sure you, make sure you get it in a shot. I saw Abdul, Trinidad came through, Edson and G from Pato mm. were there. Charlie Morgan was there. Oh, shout out Charlie. Hanging out with him. It was just it was just a great time. Polly Cristo was there. I just love these like outside everybody is there type of moments because so much of the appreciating of sneakers that we do and the talking about sneakers that we do happens on the internet and social media, which is not real life. And mm. that's why I love to be outside and see people just hang out. You know? All right, there we go. It was, it was warm this weekend, too. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. It felt like I was still in the Caribbean, but we're back. Yeah, we're back. We got a lot of news to get to. Where do we want to start? Let's start, right? Listen, his back problems, you being in the street, <laughs> all great, but let's get down. We got a lot of stuff to start yeah. Yeah. with. I, wait, can we talk about, this isn't that new. Some of the stuff isn't that new, uh, but what about these Bape Adidas Stan Smiths? Well, do you like these? So, yeah, let's hear. Let's hear the, the, let's the, hear. the narrative on it, right? Is okay. that... Uh, Bape is doing a Adidas Stan Smith mm-hmm. in the all over camo. I think it's the first camo. OG camo. Yeah. First camo print, which I think is awesome. I know Joe LaPuma used to wear a uh, first camo trucker hat. Or was it a trucker hat? First camo trucker hat, first camo Bape sh- hoodie all the way zipped we up. We better find the photos for this. I, I think, have, but I think tons you wore on my the, Instagram. But I'm just saying you wore the trucker hat. I remember a bunch like after the Bape era, like. In, no, in a cool way. Like you, no, no, but it wasn't like o, yes, OG yes. Joe Lapuma. It but was like I did it was have like, a lot of OG. F- that's what I mean. Stuff, but you'd yeah. pop up like 2016 in the office, like just yep. randomly, just wearing it. Like mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why I remember it from. Yes, those shoes got posted online. I posted it in our uh, Slack channel saying these are awesome. Or maybe these are <laughs> these are freaking sweet. As yeah, freaking sweet. <laughs> yeah, freaking sweet. Dang. <laughs> yeah, and you guys, Joe actually said putrid. Yeah, I don't like those. <laughs> I just think that it's not that interesting to see something so plain in the year of our Lord 2024. I think that it was cool that Stan Smith is wearing the Bape Adidas Stan Smith in the teaser photos, but also I have a sneaking suspicion that Stan Smith has no idea what a bathing ape but, is. But it doesn't see it doesn't to me, matter that, to me. Him him posting it did a lot for it's me. It's super cool. Super cool. The sneaker itself aesthetically is not great. But Stan Smith wearing the shoe. You think it, the it's sneaker just... aesthetically is good? Yes. In 2024? Here's what, I would say. Yes. Here's what I would say. The camo, I love. Everyone knows I love Bape camo. I Stan Smith's iconic shoe. I just don't like how that camo looks on the shoe. Stan Smith posting with them did a lot. In, like You could say it's a cool project. I just don't like the shoe. I cannot imagine... Me wearing that, you. Well, but I could imagine it. But about I could it. imagine it maybe as like on the shelf here, maybe on you know next to the Air Force One you designed or something like that. Yeah. Either way, I think it's cool, be- and I appreciate it through the lens of remembering being super fanatic about pretty plain Adidas shoes in general. Um, but this and- is not a plain Adidas. Would you wear them? Let me finish. Okay. okay. Being. Don't uh, throw your back out. No. Being ecstatic about uh, what someone called plain Adidas shoes in there not being that much hype swirling around mm-hmm. those sort of sneakers. So getting a hype version of those shoes from time to time when those are the sort of models that you prefer to wear mm-hmm. is a nice deviation into more of the hype beastie on like your own terms. Yeah. That's what I appreciate about it. And then just seeing Stan Smith hold the shoes I love that. and wear the shoes. I love that. If I could get Stan Smith in a full zip up hoodie, that might change my mind. I love a little that. Bit. I love that, of course. I just couldn't, I just wouldn't wear them. I do see what you're saying. Basically, sometimes you want to pop out a neck breakers. Is that what you yeah, say? Yeah, you yeah. Would something wear, like but that. You would but wear on that. your own terms. On my own terms. Yeah. Where I don't feel like, oh, I'm buying the one hype shoe that everybody's going after. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not throwing on a pair of chunky donkeys and feeling out of my element. Mm-hmm. I still feel like I'm wearing something cool that aligns with what I want to put on my feet. Okay. Yeah. That's all. I do think it's funny and I appreciate it on this level of just brand wars where Nike is involved in a lawsuit that they brought against Bape for Bape making knockoff Nikes and at the same time 
Adidas is making collaboration sneakers with Bape. I think that's funny, and I can enjoy it on that level. And it was, it's even funnier to me, too, because the photo with Stan Smith where he's sitting on the bench wearing the shoes, he has, like, the like the super Adidas performance logo, uh, like, tennis hat on. Yeah. Which is hilarious. Uh, more tennis news. The one and only Andre Kirk. Oh, Agassian. <laughs> yeah. Andre yeah. Agassi. Yes. Unveiled that the Air Tech Challenge 2 Hot Lava is coming back, a shoe that has been out several times. Would uh, you say he's your dream interview? Yes. Uh, he, like number one. Yes. He's 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 eluded me. I was supposed to interview he's him. Eluded me. He's el- I was supposed to interview him, I believe, in 2015 or 2014 when mm-hmm. I th- believe him and Roger Federer, I think it was. I'm, maybe I'm getting Popped that out for a Nike event or something like they that. They played, uh, it was like a Nike court event where they mm-hmm. played tennis in the streets of New York City. Yeah, yes, I downtown. Remember that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I was supposed to interview him. I showed up and then curved you. You had an interview scheduled? Yes. Yes. And then I'm like, hey, where is he? And I'm waiting in line because there was like a bunch of press media people. And mm-hmm. then it got to the end and my name never got called. Oh, just like basketball tryouts, huh? <laughs> High school basketball tryouts? No, it's I mean, not salty. like that. It was like set up through Nike. So, and then I asked them, hey, what happened? And they never gave me an answer Nike, what happened yeah either way um andre agassi we'll get him for you it's really my dream interview um, okay we'll get him for i you. would love to have him here on this podcast yes. not, you know i don't want to be selfish i no, would no, love no. to share that moment with you no for sure uh just whatever but uh not whatever but onto the shoe he uh he uh unveiled that there's a uh, aged version of the shoe big ncb shoe oh yeah huge ncb shoe I would. I wouldn't. Surpri- Big Rich A shoe. Big NCB yep. shoe. How uh, strong the reaction to that was? That seemed like it went off on the internet. You were surprised at how much people care about Air Tech Challenge Two Hot Lava Retro. Yeah, it was cool to see him wearing it. Uh, Steffi Graf, his wife, was also wearing Nike, switched up from the the Adi. I'm happy that that sneaker is coming back because I feel like that's one of those classic Nike retro. 90s sneakers that still looks good and that they haven't beat to death yet yeah and is on a good cadence of being around for a bit you know early 2010s we got a lot of air tech challenge twos we got the us open pairs the grand slam pairs they did a lot of it back then but then they pulled away and there hasn't been too much of it in the past eight nine ten years so the sneaker is still somewhat sacred i think it came out in 2019 is that right but that's five but it's five recently okay five years ago and if it did come back yeah. then, and I appreciate you fact yeah. checking me as always, like they didn't beat it to death then. We didn't see a ton of it. No, and it's crazy because that's five years ago, and it feels like everything pre twenty twenty is like another lifetime, different so era, different. So decade. it's like, oh, th- those came out, yeah, correct, um, pre that. So it's one of those shoes for me, at least, where it's like, you know, I don't have a ton of Nike shoes mm-hmm. anymore, but there's a certain few like OG models that you know, uh, infrared nineties, uh, white every time. Sub- White cement threes, where it's just nice to have that one Nike shoe that you know you can put on and wear and just feel cool in it. Especially with the type of outfits you're putting together oh, these days. Are you kidding? I the need kit. so can you, badly. Can you imagine him at the U.S. Open in this fit with the Tech Challenge? <laughs> ah, no, I can't because in Why? my mind's eye, well, I mean, he did, would have the cutoff. Yes, on. he did he would, the <laughs> denim short. Would you cut the sleeves off for the if it was in the summer Jean with this fit? Put the sleeves. Would guy. you wear the jorts? <laughs> no, no. Premium no. Pete. You know, I used to wear jorts. Premium Pete. <laughs> always used to say no jorts but would you wear them <laughs> no okay but still i want to see the matt wealthy outfit with the Tech challenge to hot lava retro it's 11 11 you made a wish i'm making a wish <laughs> will you please get that shoe when it comes out in 2024 yes i i 100 uh, percent will a lot of people uh in the comments were actually hoping that nike does a solid and releases the apparel along with oh, it wow because I feel like the shoes are iconic, mm-hmm. like truly iconic. Yes. And the apparel is truly iconic. Yeah. I know our friend Kevin Loyster is super big into that. Yep. Our friend and coworker Zach Dubasic yes. has some OG Nike Air Tech Challenge apparel. I think that stuff is always relevant. But again, bring it bring it back in a in and, a conservative way. Don't and don't a part of me got a part of me just got a little bit excited too because uh Andre Agassi commented on our Instagram. Oh. So you thought you were getting close. Not even getting close. It just it just got me excited in yeah. general. I just made the wish at eleven eleven that you get the interview. We get the, or can we have it again? Can we? Sh- I, w- I want to have it on the podcast. Sure, that'd be <laughs> fun. Having but, Andre Agassi sit right here, of course. But falling into the theme of the day, being a good friend. <laughs> if you Getting get on his it, knees for you. <laughs> I would love to have him here. Yeah. Of and course. Al- and also, let's just make abundantly clear. 
why you appreciate Andre Agassi so much. Oh, uh, just uh, I've, I don't think I've ever been like, it's not that it's a long story. Uh, well, okay. No, no, it's just like the, the brief instance of it. So growing up, I was adopted as a kid. Uh, I don't think I've ever said that on camera. Um, and then um, when I was 14 years old, I got like the paperwork. Oh, I saw the paperwork for my adoption, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, your father is of Armenian descent. That's why I talk about it. And as yeah. people wonder why, oh, your name's Matt Welty, but you say you're Armenian. Why do you, like, what's, people are just confused about the connection. So I find out that when I'm 14, growing up in New Hampshire, there's not a lot of Armenian people around. It's a very niche, like, culture, community. Were you immediately on a journey to try and discover I just what didn't that know, was? I didn't know much about it. It's yeah. not like, hey, you're Italian, yeah. or you're Puerto Rican, or you're German, like these, like, big ethnic groups that there's an instant connection to, yes. you know? And uh, so this is pre-Kardashian era and Andre Agassi was one of the biggest Armenian celebrities in the world, you know, in a truly iconic sports hero. So yes. as a kid who didn't really have much connection to a heritage that I'd just been plopped on me mm -hmm. in my teenage years, he was someone that I looked up to and that's the real reason why I want to I never, him. I never knew that story. Oh, that's... let me tell you something. What? I'm gonna fight for that fucking interview. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, wait, I'm not even joking. Straight to camera. Yeah. Now I'm on it. Now I'm yeah, on it. Yeah, that's the story behind it. Okay. Yeah. Did that immediately attract you to his sneakers? Thank did you, you for did sharing. Did you go that, by on it? Oh, yeah, I, I love thank that Thank you story. for sharing. Yeah. I'm gonna make it my mission to get you that interview. Uh, yeah. It, um, I remember. So, I was super hyped on them. And then it was 2007 mm -hmm. when Nike retroed uh, the AirTech Challenge 3, um, the white, the tennis ball. Pit. Yes. Which one was I wearing, the black and blue one, forever? That was the Tech Challenge 2. Okay. That was the U.S. Open pair, I believe. I was yep. wearing. Yep. But Tech Challenge 3 came out, and it was just disappointing because I really wanted that shoe. I was super hyped. I went out and bought it. But that's when Andre had gone away from uh nike mm -hmm. and had, he was sponsored by adidas at the time mm -hmm. so they retro the shoe and it didn't have the tennis ball on the back and the color was off like the lime yellow on it was yeah. like much more of a just a yellow than a highlighter color not quite right still have the shoes but okay. i can picture a young matt wealthy on nike talk refreshing thread after thread to try and get the info on where to buy a pair oh those are hot i'm on it now should we talk about the sneakers we're wearing on feet mm -hmm. yes okay I did. I pulled a switcheroo. This is a stormy day, snow swirling in New York City, but I am wearing the Nike SB Dunk Low J Pack, black and blue. A sneaker, Great shoe. Sneaker I wore for the Lupe Fiasco episode of Full Size Run. Actually, I was wearing Linen Air Force Ones all last week Saw on vacation. You. Thank you. Saw him. Thank you. And he, I wanted yeah. what? Uh, what's the word? What? What's yeah? What's the Not word? Not a thought. Elegant. Doing too he much. He has something. He has <laughs> premeditated. He Do you believe don't that, sleep on him. Don't what? sleep on him with the linen Air Force Ones. No. He knows what he's doing. I always say that. No, and I he knows I what he's doing. The I linen, linen Air Force linen Ones. Pants the wedding. No, the linen Air Force One was cool too because I yeah. remember you ended up, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. you ended up getting that shoe when it got re-released uh, via Kith, Kith Miami. in yeah. Miami. Yeah. I bought a pair yeah. on eBay. I got and there the was Futura the, box. Yeah, yeah, the Futura sorry, box. Sorry, but box. when that shoe <laughs> came out, for whatever reason, in that moment in sneaker world, that was a pre-off-white. Yeezy or not Yeezy but like sneaker hype you know yeah. where things hadn't really taken off yet and that shoe kind of like went under the radar a little bit yes I think partly because Kith had like 2,000 pairs I was told at the time and they were only available at Kith Miami and people weren't feeling Air Force Ones that much at the time so the shoes are really slow to sell out and I think they were relatively accessible there and you could just go and buy a pair again because they were the only people selling yeah. them so you could get them on eBay for relatively cheap yep. and I bought a pair for 250 or 270 or something like yeah. that but awesome shoe he does he, he doesn't get caught slipping if you had the he doesn't get caught slipping me <laughs> if i step out today with this if i go to chick-fil-a down the block like this someone sees me i'm slipping if you had to pick though for the if, if you could only wear jpack sbs mm -hmm. or royal ones for like not the rest of your life yeah but, but you I could, could only have access to one of those shoes yeah it's which one easy, would you go for easy answer <sighs> I'll take the SB Dunks just because okay. I think they're more comfortable. Even though the Royal Jordan one is going to last longer, and you was, can wipe it I down. I was wrong. I would take Royal ones. I like well, those though. Hey, you know who uh, had a question? We've talked about this on the podcast before, mm -hmm. and you know, we're, like we're saying, hey, maybe I don't want to wear a high top, mm -hmm. whatever. 
your your friend Sebastian, Sebastian saw that. <laughs> what? Are you what? too old to wear Air Jordans? Well, he said, "I have one pair of Jordans." Where do you think he got those? I think he bought them on sneaker shopping. He bought the Chicago ones, and I think the Concord Eleven. So I think those are the pairs that he was talking about wearing. We need Sebastian to bring them out. Okay, bring them out. And bring them out. he was on a podcast with Rich Rich Eisen. Yep, and he said, "Is he too old to wear Jordans? He's fifty, which we've been talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, not. Are you too old to wear Air Jordans? But it's just like you reach a certain point where you're like, yeah. hey, a certain shoe that I was super hyped on eight, nine years ago. Hey, maybe it's not in my. May not make that I much would sense look, for where so, I am right now. I'm, a, I'm a tech Sebastian. Pop out in the Jordans. <laughs> okay, I, I have to complete this tangent. I was on. Oh, so, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. It's all. It's all. It's it's on me. Um, I wanted to wear the linens. Also because the retro's coming back out and I kind of want to get my time in and with them before the new ones come out. Doesn't that does that stink when it's like, oh, you 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 held onto a shoe for so long? No. It takes the pressure off for me. That's why I wore them on vacation. I was yeah, like, you know what? If I beat them up a little bit, it's okay. And I might even go with a nine and a half in Air Force Ones going forward. But I, I realized Wait, you that went from ten and a half. No, Air Force One's always ten. Okay, but you were ten and a half in sneakers. Right. We convinced you, you to go down to a me. size ten. Yes, and now you're go okay. Now you're ten, so now you're nine and a half. And I think just the the linen Air Force One, the last retro felt good on my foot, and also I liked I liked putting it out there because maybe people thought, oh, he has a new pair. It's not the new pair, but I'm like maybe for Air Force Ones I could go nine and a half. But anyways, okay. I noticed that on the Fat Joe episode of the Complex Sneaker Show, the most recent one, I wore the linen Air Force Ones. For that reason, I said no. Let me do something different. That is my long no. explanation oh, of why okay, I'm wearing totally JPEG no. Nike SB Dunks. Thank you. I'm doing the ACG <laughs> Zoom Air AO. All conditions gear. How were, how, how were they for the conditions? Because yeah. it's snowing. Because it's snowing. Now, I wonder if this is a hiking shoe or it's good for the snow. But I looked. All conditions. Those are I both looked, conditions. I looked. It says. um. Yeah. What, some what, can, uh, wait, where is it? S S C G. Oh. Some conditions. Wait, drainage. It has drain. It has a little. Su- the yeah, drainage. So you're which, staying dry. How do your feet feel? They feel great. They uh-huh. feel great. Snowflakes Funny story about around, these. You don't feel a thing. No, funny. I feel like the, if you know, there's a lot of slush. If the slush gets in here, just these. Yeah. Let's get a close up. The the um. <laughs> you in a yoga pose right the now? Whole, Turn the camera I'm flexible. On. Okay. Mm-hmm. Look, but very flexible. <laughs> Have I de- ever? You can't do that. I what? mean, not with your back, but you can't do that in do general. What? Put. Can you put your whole thing behind? So just put his whole. Can you do like, both? Oh, that was tight. tight. Can you do tight. both? You're looking tight. like Dolls M right now. I was tight. Uh, but I think the slush gets through. How was the mesh upper in the snow? Oh, fine. Really? Yeah, didn't feel anything. (laughs) Funny story, though. These were one of the classic pandemic buys where I bought multiple pairs, and I was just buying, I wouldn't say dumb sneakers, but I was- Well, you were big on the mountain fly. Yep. Yep, you're a big Uh, mountain fly. Multiple pairs of those. Zach, the basic shoe. And big. Poor Zach. He said, did they hard to get on? I was like, no, they're super easy. And then- Big JLP shoe. Very tough to get on. But (laughs) undesing these Uh for today- there was a Jordan box right next to it. I'm like, oh, what are these? Buried. Mm-hmm. Opened up the Jordan box. Didn't look at the label. Sometimes we want to, you know, yep. don't kill the suspense. Fresh pair of Black Cat 4s. <laughs> fresh <laughs> pair of Black Cat 4s. No I, better feeling. Oof. You know, it wasn't, wasn't a fresh pair of Black Cat 4s. Saw that. Oh, yeah. We had talked about it here on the podcast, and I just kind of wanted to uh, talk about uh, being Black History Month. Wanted yeah. to talk about the Black History Month 3s, which I think is a awesome shoe uh, some people commented that it's one of their favorite black history month sneakers that nike ever made um and just put like just to give it a little bit of shine or light and someone i mentioned the black cat fours because it's they're not similar shoes but yeah. they look they look a little kind similar. of in the same vein yeah and someone goes hey i bought my son a pair of the black cat fours and he wore them every single day as a fry cook at mcdonald's and that shoe yeah well you know Pride. what those, Pride. Sh- those shoes I have Beaten a pair. Battered. I have a pair. I've said it on this podcast before. I played softball in them. Mm-hmm. Caked on, caked on mud. For whatever reason, probably because they're all black, just feels like you could but put them, them in situations it, you shouldn't. It's yeah. funny, though, because I know, Joe, you are always uh, towards being like, hey, shoes always look better with wear. That's like kind of one of your uh, mantras, right? Correct. When, yeah, when it comes to shoes. Correct. Black Cat 4s, biggest big JLP shoe. There is. But yeah. then we see the one pair where- uh, That was too took much. It too but, far. But the Endless Summer 4s that I have, the Endless Summer 4s. Famous. <laughs> the, famous endless endless summer, summer. the Endless Summer Black Cat 4s are beat to hell, and I'd still bring them out. Yeah. Uh, but eventually, we got to put those in a museum. Someone, hey- I, w- I, w- <laughs> I Imagine, yeah. I want to put this out here because I think that this would be a funny ones. No. Oh. 
uh, because when we say to make photoshops, people actually do them. Can someone take <laughs> a, a pitch of uh, the movie, uh, take the poster from the movie Endless Summer, mm -hmm. where he's on the beach with a surfboard? Okay. And I can like you this. please photoshop like Joe LaPuma's face on it in a pair of black cap fours where it says Endless Summer? I like this. I would love to see it. <laughs> we, we, we could print the poster out, put it on a set or something? Yeah. Yes. Or maybe we can't clear it. But uh, not we'll much, what he got on Not page. much to say. Friend of the program, Ronnie Feig, Kith, Frank Lloyd Wright. 998s. With the tongues looking just right because your yes, friend Joe thanks, Lapuma. Thanks to Joe. <laughs> fixed them up tongue, for you. Tongue, tongue fuck. Yep. I'm, yeah, I'm tongue. We're all kind of tongue Jimmy. <laughs> just a cat though. Yo, I, we, I don't think oh. we ever even talked about it on we here. We have so much to talk about. This is going to be a fun No, I, it was just, on, It's it, already we, fun. 26 yeah, minutes one in. Of, one of the funny uh, moments in recent memory was a Robert Downey Jr. tongue effing. Oh, wow. Tongue effing. The, Wait, we talked about him. The lightning. Didn't we talk about no, it? No, not on the, the podcast. The tongue was out like this. <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> like, <laughs> Wait, was it like this or like this? The lightnings. <laughs> yeah, he had the lightning force yeah, on. the tongue wagon, like Bro, Jim Carrey like, in the mask. He was, he, it was like he was wearing the autos. Remember the Kanye <laughs> oh, auto? Yeah, yeah, the auto Matsumoto's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you got to do to get him on sneaker shopping? We've been trying. We've been trying. He'd be great. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I totally forgot about that photo, but <laughs> yeah, amazing. I want to I want to sprinkle some leaks in. Can we do that? Yeah. On here, we like to uh, whine and opine, Le but leak, leak Luch. Yes, me. It's him. You know, we like to give you our opinion on things and talk about news, but also we like to break some news. The other podcasts don't give you that, but just just so you know, this is this is rumored stuff. We like to give that disclaimer as well, mm -hmm. where it's single source. We don't have it totally confirmed yet, but just some of the whispers we're hearing about upcoming sneakers. One of them, I'm hearing that there's a new kobe nike air force one coming okay i'm sure people will be happy to see more kobe sneakers that aren't strictly kobe sneakers i know it's not going to be mm -hmm. but part of me hopes that it's in the vein of that 2007 pair from the 25th anniversary is that where they had all their faces on the yeah. side of the shoe there, there's a kobe pair where yeah. it's like a it's like a tan i believe i might be getting it wrong i believe it's a tan almost like buttery new buck-esque suede mm -hmm. kobe's face on it and then there's like uh, aquamarine, yeah. turquoise. Who else was in that pack? 2007. I want to say Dirk was in it, but I don't no. know if Dirk had a air. You're, wait, did they have the players on this? Yeah. I think Dirk was in it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe like. I want to look that up. I'm going to look it up. Do you know how, how the hell would you remember that? Do you know, and he's right. But do you know how absurd, Dirk Air Force One. Do you know how absurd one. that is to have a. Dirk Nowitzki Air Force One. Do you know how absurd it is to have an Air Force One with Dirk Nowitzki on like this? On the no, no, no. Side this of it? Okay, this sorry is to, Sorry to bury the Kobe League. No, I just rem I remember that because uh, that was when the Air. When <laughs> is Nike, this it? Yeah. Or that's the Air Force 25. That was when Nike did that Air Force 25. Yep. Shoe where it was the 25th anniversary. Yeah. They had a huge year plan for the Air Force One. It didn't really like pan out the way that people had hope. This is 2007. Great, Great logo. Look two, at the 2007. Logo. The biggest moment of it all, though, was Ooh. the Kanye, uh, Nas, Rakim, KRS One classic music yeah. video. Yeah. Talk about it. Yeah. Didn't Kanye have that Nike jacket on? That's yeah. a jacket they need. But either way, back. Kobe moment. Air Force One. Yeah. Again, rumored. Don't have it super confirmed. New Kobe Nike Air Force One with a Python swoosh. There, there was also, the a, I believe, a GS pair uh, years ago that yep, was like a, right. a white, yellow, purple yep. with like the Kobe tri logo in the corner. We know already that Cortez has more Nikes in the works. There's the Hirachi. three pack of Nike Air Trainer Hirachis. I think I have to, I don't know if I said it on here, but I almost have to. Uh, what, what's the. I, not apologize, but just uh, correct myself because I thought, you know what, if they're going to be doing that shoe, I just didn't, I didn't see, hey, that shoe being popular mm -hmm. um, in today's day and age, but saw some of the, like the photo mock-ups with the black with the camo and the gum on it, mm. and I'm like, looks kind of cool. The early CADs that we leaked, yeah, you yeah. like them based on that? Dirty work leaking the CADs. <laughs> hey, Dirty <laughs> ass. <laughs> but looks cool. Dirty. Looks, looks cool. Uh, here's some more leaks. The rumor is that there is another Cortez Nike Air Max 95 coming. Okay. Now you now you have my attention, says JLP. <laughs> Did you see Clint hitting the crossbar and playing soccer in the Louis Vuitton Air Force Ones? No, I missed Should've that. Should have posted that. I missed that. Another one I want to touch on. This has been out there a little bit already about how Nike is going to be doing more with Stash in the future. And some people said that there's a Stash Air Max 95 retro. I think we already spoke about that not being a one-to-one -one retro in the works. Okay. But I've also heard that maybe the Stash Air Force One is coming back yeah, you around. You recently. Yeah, you know, 
He's man. Cal- he's calculated. <laughs> I would, and I don't know this again. I would let's love put the, the disclaimer. I would again. love the ninety-five though, because the ninety-five. There's is... a stash ninety-five coming for sure. I just don't I know. think it's an OG. Do you think that is a top five Air Max ninety-five of all time? It might be. Off the top of my head, I'm going to say yes. Me too. I think so, but it, it's tough. You know, <sighs> so um, good. I, I think it'll look like the original, but have some tweaks. And again, Air also, Force One, I'm I'm here for it. Also, the other shoe too that I feel like gets swept under the rug a little bit in. Dash's sneaker legacy in the same time period that mm-hmm. you can't wear anymore mm-hmm. that I would love for them. BW? Retro. BW. Yes. Stash, classic. Nike Air classic. classic BW. Just to Bob Parisi, who I used to work at a finish line. Yeah. Yeah, okay? Those... Looked Irish, was Italian. Bob Parisi from Staten <laughs> Island. Important. My mom used to make him gorgonzola and pasta. Great dish. Bespoke <laughs> dish. Big Air Classic BW guy. He was my first manager of finish line. Yeah, I would love for that shoe to come back. Another one... I'm hearing holiday 2024, and I think we can all be excited for this OG Spirit on retro. You love that white you know, sport red. Big uh, who's big? What shoe? A friend of ours. Uh, Chris Schoenberger. Oh, maybe big Ronnie Fike shoe. Okay, yeah, and he you know said what? It on this podcast, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, let's check me if I'm wrong here. Okay, because like, can we take a little bit of credit for this? Because I think when oh. we had Ronnie Fike on here last time, I was talking about how it'd be good for a spirit on retro right now that the time is right for it and that i wanted to come back and now we're hearing that maybe it's come back can we take any credit for that or should we just leave that one alone no but damn it <laughs> when he says no you know <laughs> when he's not taking credit when he's no it all, credit, it all depends, we really can't it all depends on the timeline though <laughs> yeah, sometimes sure. you know we have to like think about it but if it comes out for holiday 2024 and we set it in the middle of 2023 you, you that's about because sometimes because sometimes yeah. that does that stuff does happen you know um where we like we would like talk to someone about a shoe, and then next thing you know, like a year and a half later, you're like, "Hey, that came out." Yeah. Air Max Deluxe. Um, <laughs> but I'm just happy if it is indeed happening. Again, all the stuff we're talking about in this little segment, we, we'll, hey, put it, we'll put it as a rumor. Uh, friend of ours of the program, Ian Stonebrook, had uh, put it out there the other day because I had uh, mentioned cause people. Everyone's talking. Uh, 20th anniversary of college dropout. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I just wanted to highlight that moment where Kanye wore the Air Zoom Miler. I remember that shoe in the in the workout plan video next to Anna Nicole Smith. Also, rest in peace. And it's funny because during that period, everyone thinks Kanye, you know, uh, with some ones that's clean in a shirt with a team. Yeah. you know, uh, Air Max 90s. Yeah. That was kind of his vibe at the time. And he's wearing a performance Nike running shoe that. Uh, gets sampled by Nike recently, an mm-hmm. Elliott Kipchoge line, but it it also looks similar to the Air Zoom Spirit on, mm. which is the one that uh, Stussy did recently. Yeah, recently. The Spirit that, on Cage 2? Looks yeah. exactly like yeah. it. Didn't they do a, a Livestrong version of that Myler back in the finish line days? I remember Maybe. that. Pretty but, sure. But pretty awesome shoe in our friend Ian Stonebrook is like, hey, with all this like mesh talk going around, Nike should have brought back the Zoom Miler or the Spirit on because those shoes really speak to OG the, Spirit on. Yeah, really speak to the trend, but also like core Nike like brand. You um, better not give him credit for it over us. Who Ian? No, no he had, he had said. <laughs> no, no, no. He had said <laughs> I give credit to Ian. You know why? The little Dicky T Mac. Oh yeah, I got it from an Ian Stonebrook interview. I hit him always, always. Shouts to Ian. Nike. Happy belated, Ian. Happy birthday, Ian. Nike Dunk Low, what the code dot JP. This is a pair where they mashed up a bunch of yep. dunk colorways together. Those should be coming back out. This year's Nike Air Max Day shoe. DN? Well, the DN, yeah, but also the big bubble Nike Air Max 186, white and blue, which so far, okay, cool, but it's going to have, I'm told, the Volt accents on oh, it. They a did la, that. A they... la the 2014 Nike Air Max. One I actually Air Max like, but I actually like that shoe. No, everyone no. hates that shoe. I'm everyone. The one that, this is hey, everyone right I here. know we had the whole Air Max uh, day discussion, yeah. and we're like, hey, we poop, <laughs> we you poo pooed the combo <laughs> yeah. before you had it. But hey, look that that one. And Nike's done some cool shoes on Air Max Day. I think. That, oh, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, they there was that one period where they were bringing back all the Atmos stuff, and Heat. they they hit with the Sean Weatherspoons. Classic. Oh. Big Air Max. Yeah, I mean, you know, huge. they were really in their really sweet spot. Yeah, but that 2014 pair, I do not like that pair at all. Why would you put nacho color? I like, I like that shoe. They used the neon that I used red. on Volt, my Air Max 95s a little bit. Volt was such... Those Air Max 95s might look a little bit like the upcoming Cortez ones, but we'll talk about that you later. Have to, that, during that era, though, Volt was like, 
the Nike brand ethos. Yeah, like that was almost as at that moment, Volt was almost synonymous with Nike as a swoosh. You know, like it's like this. This I can't remember the full story, but back in the day, Nike like the one of the technologies was just putting a swoosh on a shoe. It's yeah. like that same era. Like one of the Nike technologies, in addition to Lunar and Flyner or whatever, was just making a shoe Volt, and somehow it, that would make and you, also uh, during jump that era faster. If you want to talk big JLP let's shoes, hear it. which let's I hear always it. do. Yep, let's hear it. The re-release of the Atmos Beast Air Max 95s. Oh, you The animal. You wore those a lot? Once a season. I want Once a, I a want season. Atmos Air Max 95 Biotech Retro. Oh. Or Air Max 1 Biotech. I remember voting for those in the Bring Back program and praying. Praying that we got them. But we got the, the other Atmoses, which are great as well. Those are great. Also, the same vein as the... I always mispronounce this. Ural... Urawa. I know what you're talking about. Mm. <laughs> Kashima nine, Antler 97s. I, oh, I had the 95s. Talk about it. I had the 95s. The gold ones? Yeah. But the black pair with the yeah. cement print yeah. in that turquoise. Yep. Those are good. Those, are, Those good. are good. Some more news. Kai Sanat Nike deal. How do you guys feel about it? I love it. It makes sense for Nike. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy. Not, I'm not thrilled by it. I know that um, there's been a lot of Kai Sanat hate in the atmosphere lately after the whole Grammys thing and the whole Killer right. Mike thing, Travis Scott thing. Look, I can understand why Nike would want to align themselves with Kai Sanat. Uh, if they give him product, I don't think it's any product that I'll be interested in just because I don't watch his content and it doesn't mean anything to me. Not saying it's good or bad, not yeah. making a value judgment on it. Again, I think it's a smart signing for Nike, but it's not for me. I, I love it. I think that, no, the same, that's the same way that I felt on it, where it's like, hey, I don't have any sort of like ill will or just like, oh, if you watch Kai Sanat, you're not cool. You know, that's not how I view it. It's just, hey, you know, it's like I see the stuff online from time to time. I don't watch his streams, but I don't watch much streamers mm -hmm. to, oh. to begin with. I just don't like take the content in. So I don't really have like, a, like you said, like a good or bad about it. It just, yeah. He's doing big things, so it makes sense that Nike would sign him. So I love it. New generation. I think that they're the new entertainers. Yes. I think he's highly entertaining. Had such a great person. You know, sometimes we talk about personal experiences yes, with people. Yeah. Such a great personal experience with him filming sneaker shopping. So happy for him. Also like that Nike where I think back in the days, even like Oh, they signed a uh, entertainer, a musician. Yes. It was like, oh, wow. Now they're not just signing athletes. To see them signing yeah. a streamer? Mm -hmm. Come a long way. I like it. Yeah, yeah. It makes Happy sense. Happy for him. The Kai Sanat thing was interesting, too, because it happened around the Super Bowl. I, there is so much interesting sneaker news to come out of the Super Bowl this year. And we usually don't look at the Super Bowl as a huge sneaker event. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the footwear brands always try and come there and make an imprint and have their biggest stars wear something that's important for them to push. But All-Star is the real that's sneaker the holiday. Thing. A week before All-Star, they were already, the brands were already permeating the mm -hmm. big events. Yep. Kai Sanat to Nike, not an official signing, but are we getting to? Jay-Z to Reebok? Are we getting? I don't think so. No, I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. Gonna I don't think so. You throwing a rock? I, okay. I'm, well, I'm not, I'm not in agreement. So Jay Z wore <laughs> at the Super Bowl wore the 2003 OG colorway of the S. Doc Carter Reebok. Yes. Or RBK sneaker, right? Huh? Important distinction. RBK, mm -hmm. not Reebok. RBK. Uh, but yeah. Wait. Make that distinction for people. That just at the know. just at the time period, it was. I mean, it's Reebok, but Reebok had kind of relaunched themselves as RBK, and RBK was much more of the, like, entertainment, mm -hmm. uh, streetwear, Pharrell, 50, oh, et yeah. cetera. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Keep me honest. I don't know if yeah. you guys know this, but I remember that the S. Dot Carter finish line didn't get them for some reason. Maybe in my town it was a Foot Locker exclusive. I just remember I don't know. walking past closing – and walking past the Foot Locker, and it was the Jay Z in the closet with all the sh the it, yeah the photo all, the photo the yeah, photo yeah. and mm -hmm. I was just like damn we didn't get them and I remember Rudy Calderon of Yao Ming, Yao Ming had the black thing. colorway had the black colorway of the S dot so such a nostalgic moment for me and then when I saw it when I saw him at Jay Z at the Super Bowl I immediately grabbed it the photo and then we zoomed in and. I thought maybe it was the Gucci shoe, and I was like, oh, he's wearing the Which Gucci the shoe, shoe that he shoe. sampled. Yeah, based off Gucci Tennis 84. Yeah, that's but, what his Reebok shoe is based mm -hmm. on. But it wasn't. It was the RBK, and you got some 
information on yep. it? Yeah, we have the background on it. So Reebok made around 12 pairs of new Jay-Z sneakers. Which is sneakers. crazy because it means they would have had to have the molds and everything just like yeah. ready to go. They made these just for Jay-Z. That pair that he was wearing at the Super Bowl when you first saw Jay Z wearing Reeboks, you couldn't tell whether it was an original or we something new. We had the whole new. discussion. We're like, "Hey, is the, yeah, is, the, we, is, the is the tongue tag yellowed enough for it?" We to were be trying old? to do the forensics. I this love, is a new pair. They made him new pairs. Is it weird that that's like my favorite stuff? Is that no? Do you see, guys, see, do you guys love like that slack on the Super Bowl night when we're trying to figure it out? I think either Riley or Zach put like the tongue from an old eBay. That is like the shit that I like still... Like the super nerdy, like... Yes. Is it super nerdy? I love that. I love, I love that. Mahomes throwing the ball all over. Brock Purdy. I was looking at the slack for S-Dots. <laughs> but ah. also, like this guy who wears the linens, who I said always uh -huh. calculated. Uh -huh. Jay-Z is the most calculated. Yeah. So 12 pairs, interesting. A new batch of S-Dots. But to wear them on the Super Bowl where you know that your feet are going to be photographed, where you know that we're going to have the boneless wings, but also be looking at the footwear that people are wearing yeah. in our slack. You know it's going to make news. Am I biased here? Because I felt like this was the most exciting sneaker moment to happen at the Super Bowl the whole weekend. And this is coming from a small brand, Reebok, who obviously I, I like Reebok. Obviously Re I like Reebok. Sorry, Reebok, Reebok, Reebok Purdy. Purdy. <laughs> <laughs> well, leave it in. Leave it in. Leave it in. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> But, like, you don't expect Reebok to show up to the Super Bowl and have something big go on, especially when they're going up against Nike renting out the sphere and Adidas has a big Patrick Mahomes ad on the sphere. We should get the podcast on the sphere. Can we do a podcast? Yeah, on the just sphere? our mugs. It's all I need. But, but Reebok shows up and does this, this moment that just cuts through and is exciting but in a way was, that but it was awesome because it actually connected to sneaker culture yes I feel like all the other brands come there with their initiatives and things they want to push yeah and I mean I've said it out there that I think the Air Max DN to me is just like give it time but I hear you it there, it's how so, many Air Maxes that dropped that we immediately loved not a lot I see think this Air Max but I DN, see what you're saying I don't hate the shoe yeah I it just doesn't excite me you Kyson know I was wearing it it just doesn't excite me. There's like a total difference between being like, hey, that shoe's totally fine and people want yeah. to get in and wear it. Totally cool. And then actually being excited about something and like can't wait till it comes out. I just don't get that feeling from that. So for Nike to kind of base their whole uh, Super Bowl around that and then yeah. Adidas to be like, hey, Pat Mahomes is getting a new sneaker. It's like, well, I don't give a crap about either of those things. Doesn't connect with me. Okay, so to your point, I had I was like rest I was like wrestling with my mind. Mm -hmm. Is this as big of a moment that I think it is? I love that you thought it was like the biggest moment. I felt that way, but I was most like, interesting for sure. I was like, well, do, I was like, am I do I care about this more than other people? It was, I think so. It was I think big. we do care yeah, about it. That was so nostalgic because yeah. I like, was waiting for the I was waiting. I put it in the slack and then I was waiting. It was like 605. Is it up yet? 620. Just to see the reaction. Then I commented Hove Dug in the crates. He confirmed that he didn't. Yeah. New, new batch of pairs. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those weird things where you're like, hey, we all think it's awesome, but then like, if the shoe gets the official re-release, obviously it's going to sell out and everything, but maybe there's a generational gap between younger people not being super yeah. excited Would about it. Would it sell out? Yeah, of course. I'm not, I'm not saying that. It's just like, I just don't know how like Gen Z is, how excited they're going to be about a Jay-Z Reebok shoe. Do you think a Jay-Z Reebok retro would sell out? You would buy a pair. I would buy a pair. See, we would all buy pairs, and I totally agree on that because we were around when it first happened. You remember the shoe. You're excited. But Mixtape. But the, th the commercial with 50 Cent. The thing about it is is that that model. So I sampled the old Gucci shoe. If yeah. you're upset, sue me. So when, when you talk about. from the old Gucci. Yeah. If you're upset, then sue me. You oh, wait, what was it? <laughs> yeah. What did he say? <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm not... When you talk about like <laughs> retro product and things that people are going to get excited yeah. about, that like early 2000s Reebok stuff hasn't really like floated around in like the atmosphere of like collectors wearing them and yes. being part of like what I'm not saying it's not part of sneaker culture but you don't go to flight club and see like the old 50 and J shoes right. on the shelves although a lot Pete of Davidson did wear the 50 cent G units on sneaker shopping yes. so I just don't know where it's like maybe there's a whole new crop of people who that they didn't experience that yeah. when it first came out. And, and it doesn't necessarily can you mean imagine anything. And especially it being Reebok, it not being Nike or Jordan. Yeah. I just don't know. Yeah. Can you imagine 50 and Jay-Z in a new Reebok commercial in ne 2024? Can you imagine that? It would Put be that incredible. Put that on the sphere. But. Not going to happen. So the thing we have to ask, too, is 
Jay-Z showing up in a pair of Reeboks to the Super Bowl. And he has a Puma well, connection. He does have a Puma connection, but I feel like no one really understands the full connection. So I'll say this, and again, maybe I'm biased, but to me, Jay-Z popping out in a new pair of S. Dot retros is more exciting than anything he's ever done with Puma. I, I think that the whole Rock Nation Puma affiliation it's has been so rough. It's reaped rewards for a lot of people around him. But I don't think it's been that interesting, you know, Jay Z, Puma. You've never seen a cool shoe come out of that or a they've cool never really, campaign. They've never even done like sneakers. Yeah. But the thing for the me 444 is by Mosh, Mosh made makeup. customs, yeah. but like, yeah. but, 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 but maybe Jay Z doesn't care that much. But also, it's like, does Reebok have the resources to do a deal with Jay Z? I really don't think so. I feel because like it's tough because it's like, how much do you have to pay Jay Z exactly to get him to do something? And I don't think Reebok. But has he that. doesn't do things just to do them. That's why I'm I know. wondering. That's the other that's thing. why I'm wondering. He the, never does things just like, oh, I'm gonna. It's always calculated. But the thing is, to me, it wouldn't be about the money for Jay Z. I assume because I don't think Reebok has enough resources to actually pay him what he would want to do a retro sneaker or something like that so it has to be about something more and i do think that reebok wants this to happen you know reebok ceo todd krinsky who we've had on this TK. show he was there at the super bowl so i suspect that reebok is trying to make something happen whether or not they can get jay-z on board is is a yeah. totally different conversation just like the the, the ends justify the means sort yeah. of thing where it's like you have to pay i don't know how much say you have to pay jay-z like five million dollars even, even on the more low than end. that yeah, I, yeah, well, yeah. I, mean, I had i was thinking i was like you have to pay jay-z like 50 million dollars or something like that and then you make a couple lines a, a couple runs of retro shoes yeah. it's like you're obviously not going to recoup the amount of money that yeah went into that deal. But you know, I, well, I, I hope that happens. A, it. Adidas, it's funny. Adidas, you could maybe say were the closest to quote unquote winning the Super Bowl since Mahomes. they had the single biggest athlete in the on the winning team, Patrick Mahomes and Patrick Mahomes. But it doesn't translate the product. Exactly. You know, he has a new signature shoe with mm -hmm. Adidas, but we don't I've never seen anyone own or wear that shoe. Yeah. And also there were some high level flubs to me that felt so typically Adidas and, and like were, were also very entertaining. So they come directly from Adidas CEO Bjorn Golden. Oh, two, taking a picture two with Kanye? Two moments. Before, before Bjorn Golden took the photo with Kanye, we'll get to oh, that. Oh, take the picture with, yeah. Adidas CEO Bjorn Golden posts a photo on his Instagram during the Super Bowl in a suite with Lil Baby's there, James Harden is there, Bjorn Golden's son is there, and next to his son is Travis Scott. Wearing a new a brand new colorway, as far as I could tell, a never before seen colorway of his Jordan brand Jumpman Jack red, signature red shoe. suede, with red, the gum all sole. red, almost like the red Octobers. And it's such a funny moment of Adidas' CEO accidentally doing a promo shot, teasing a photo that got reposted a bunch of rival Nike. Did you and talk their to biggest anyone? endorser? With his with his signature shoe on. Did you talk to anyone from either side of how they felt about it? No. Okay. <laughs> no, but it's just like it's just so funny. Like, did you not think about that or just crop the photo a little bit to not show the he Nike sneakers? Probably didn't think about it's it. Just, yeah. What do you think about it? He, it feels like he's a little detached from. I don't want to say reality, but just kind of. Certainly, this level of sneakerhead yeah. nerdery. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, <laughs> two days later, and then Kanye West posts a photo. With Adidas CEO Bjorn Golden, which I don't know what factors go into Bjorn Golden's decision making, but if I'm him, I'm not You're like, showing hey, up hey. in a photo with Kanye West. It, those things are those uh, Super Bowl suites. They're almost like a, a social experiment, you know, <laughs> of like mm. the mixer of like who everyone could go. You're Lil Yachty it. with Tim Cook, yeah, or even just I awesome. mean the most famous one you saw over the weekend where it's like Ice Spice and Taylor Swift. Yeah, you yeah know? they showed up together. Yeah. yeah. But just I just think that like there's been so much back and forth with Adidas and Ye and the Yeezy business. Is it on? Is it off? Are we going to sell the shoes? Yeah. Are we going to not sell the shoes? There's so much fatigue. Kanye People, had the new album come out, Vultures. This yeah. Drop the pods price. Yeah, but it's just I, I think it's a bad look for Adidas to intimate on any level that they're getting back together with Kanye. And I don't think that's what this photo means, although a lot of people will yeah. interpret it as Adidas CEO Bjorn Golden testing the waters for a return of the Yeezy line. I really don't think that there's that much subtext to read into it. But I think even for him specifically, it's a bad look because if you remember last year, he went on a podcast and kind of defended Kanye amidst all the anti-Semitic comments and said, oh, he didn't really mean that. And then 
A week later, he had to apologize for a mm-hmm. comment. Yeah. So he's back in this back and forth and he just seems like showing he, up at a photo with him. It's like, what are you he doing? Just, he just seems just like a... A little bit clueless? A little bit a little, out of touch? The more that we see it, the yeah. more he just seems kind of like a flubber, you know? Like he just... <laughs> what? Like he fl- like flubs, you oh, okay. Know? I thought you meant like the... No, 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 Robin no. Robin Williams no. recipes. R.I.P. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting too, and this is an idea that I just wanted to talk about with you guys. Travis Scott wearing, you said the Red October-esque... J- Jumpman Jack shoe. Yeah. I, you know, I think we had discussed a little bit. I put it out there saying, hey, looking at that Jumpman Jack sneaker, mm-hmm. I don't think it looks like an Air Yeezy, but you can clearly see how the Air Yeezy at some point made this shoe possible. You went a little viral over that. But am I, am I wrong in thinking that? Pe- some people agreed. Some I don't, people didn't. I don't think the shoe looks one to one. Yes. But I can just see how, and especially has the strap in the middle of the foot, just how they were both the biggest entertainers on Nike at the time. They take some bit of Nike's DNA archive, mix it up in those some sort of cross-training sport fashion shoe that's not really a sport shoe, but it's not really just a, a lifestyle retro. It just, it, it comes from like the same playbook. You're totally right. I think on multiple levels, the lineage of the Air Yeezy line informs the lineage of Travis Scott's. It couldn't happen. I don't think the Jumpman Jack happens the way it does without the Yeezy. It's like the, it's just the descendant of it. You know, it it doesn't, it's not the one-to-one copy, but it's just, it's, it's, it's relative. You know, it's moved. Yes. We're not surprised, right? What? Oh, the the first launch of the Jumpman Jack. How many shoes did they make? You know, you don't. Yeah. We'll see if any shock, but any shock drop too. Did you did you hit on the the bread four shock drop? No, but I want those. I'm getting a pair. Mm, I don't know. Also, Just put in bad put in a uh, ice cold takes that I said. Oh, I don't think I'm going to get a pair. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> getting a pair. Might see me at All Star Week. Might see are, are me at All Star Weekend a with pair? them. Are you getting a pair? Just one, I think. You're going to be in Indianapolis. I will be in Indianapolis. I'll be there. One other thing I want to say while we're talking about Travis Scott signature sneakers is if there is indeed an OG Spirit on retro coming, it makes total sense because the, the other. Travis Scott shoe that we know is coming, the other signature shoe, that Sharkadon thing, has the spirit on tooling on mm-hmm. bottom. So, of course, if Nike has that back in the mix, it makes sense to bring out the OG spirit. On. Oh, yeah. I would be s- very hyped on that. And there's, like, a lot of colorways, too, that have never been retroed yeah. on the spirit on. I think it's, like, the what, the Concord, the 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 purple one. I just want the OG white sport red because I never bought that shoe before. Big Nike- JLP shoe, right? Was it, or what am I bugging? What was it? Didn't you have? I she had a black and gold spirit on that he wore a lot. Right? No. Or maybe really? triple black? Huh? I maybe. You, I think you had a spirit on ah, there. Maybe. Who so knows at this point? We're talking about all the brands at the Super Bowl. Nike at the Super Bowl didn't feel that impactful. It felt like the biggest thing they were there to do Kai. was promote the Nike Air Max DN. You had Kai Sinat showing up at the DN. Well, I mean, the biggest thing they had was they called me USHR. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, oh, that's Jordan, Jordan. brand. Oh, we'll get to that oh, for sure. Wow. But look at him. Look <laughs> beautiful, at him. Beautiful performance. <laughs> wow. But, but it's just like... Yeah, Air Max DN, like that's that's the big thing. You know, I I know they were rushing to get Nike CEO John Donahoe a pair. Look, if if you want Kai Sinat in the shoes, cool, that makes sense. If you want Travis Kelsey in the shoes, cool, that makes sense for a different audience. But getting John Donahoe it, to it, co-sign it is not is not what you want it's for the so shoe. Inter- that's so interesting to me because there was that business of fashion piece that yeah. came out where they were talking about, you know, maybe some disgruntledness internally at Nike where the brand feels like John Donahoe being a tech CEO is just kind of like pushing the brand through the algorithm and Nike's kind of lost its innovative touch mm-hmm. over over the years. And you look at the Air Max DN and I was thinking about it on the train today in all in all my bits of pain. Maybe it hit a <laughs> hit a literally hit a nerve. That <laughs> I was like nerves alone. You know what? That looking at that shoe, especially the way that like they've uh highlighted the heel bubble mm-hmm. and some of those super I don't want to say Photoshop, but like really fake beauty shots. Mm-hmm. Kind of looks like an AI sneaker a little bit. Wow. Oh, God. Am I, am I, am I? I know what you mean. I know it's just fo- a funny I thing. I know what you mean. A but fun- they're saying, I didn't know they're that, saying that's where you were going. the brand getting pushed through the algorithm. They're well, doing a shoe that looks a little AI esque instead of something innovative. And then you're like using journey cooked and it And then up. using people who Putting are like mid journey. They chat GPT'd it. Who are using people who are super big on the algorithm, a la Kai Sanat. Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Do we not? Is, is, well, I, you got the tinfoil hat I on a little bit, saying. but I you threaded the needle, and I respect it. 
touching on that article, you know, yeah. the thing that I would say, the biggest takeaway is that, and this isn't news to anyone, but we almost like joked like, oh, I used to say, oh, Fl yeah, I was in Florida, the on capital of the world. Mm -hmm. It's not a joke anymore. Yeah, those, those brands it's have not, it's, it's eaten not up a, a significant amount of Nike's. I'm not saying they're taking out Nike. They're not going to be bigger than Nike. No, and the but, article but, states that. But, but performance-wise. They're true contender, like, challengers. In the, in the yeah. performance sphere, which, you know, the article also mentions Dunks and Jordan 1s moving heavily, which mm -hmm. they were. But Nike always, the DNA is performance first, performance first. Where we would look at Ons and Hoka's, oh, they're all over, they're all over, and we'd just say it. Now you're seeing literal graphs of how big yeah. these competitors have gotten the, in the have, performance. They've really like cemented themselves. They have strong brand identities. They have strong product. Whether sneakerheads think it's cool or not, but they clearly have good product in uh, speaking to a, like a customer very directly where it's like, okay, when a D when people are like, Hey, is Adidas going to overtake Nike or here's Under Armour. You didn't really like know where they were headed yeah. sometimes. And it's like, you clearly know where on and Hoka are headed. Yeah. Yes. And they're starting to play in the fashion sense where you thought those brands would never be lifestyle cool. And you're just like, Oh, well, let's see. Let's see. Because here's what I would say. Performance wise, they're crushing. Let's see if they could go to the fashion side or the aesthetic side. That's a challenge that they're going to have. Yeah. And also, I think sometimes you have to put these numbers in perspective where if Nike's growth has slowed, yes, that's bad. Still. But Nike is still a giant company. And it's harder to grow a company that's that big versus of you see big growth from a smaller brand like Hoka or On. It's so much yeah. easier to well, grow off of a smaller base. Well, I mean, things that we see, it's like how, how hard is it to go from 1.9 million Instagram followers to 2 million yeah. versus how easy is it if you're running a brand to go from 50,000 to 350,000, yes. you know? So basically Nike is still dominant and it would be wrong to say anything otherwise. It does feel to me like there's a little bit of a lull in innovative new product. There's so much retro out there. And I do think this comes to an extent from the, the shift in priorities and the John Donahoe era that the Business of Fashion article plays up. I just think that there's a different feeling there now. That's the sense that I get when I talk to people that the, the old Nike is gone and that there's more bean counters in place. The thing that we talked about, the, not to touch on it too much, but I think it's a direct correlation mm. where we talked about Flyknit and Flyknit mm. being this new innovation. That was mentioned in the article too. Yeah, but being this new innovation that was able to spread across the brand, mm -hmm. you know, um, a la like something like React, you know, where it's like you take a technology and you're able to spread it across the company and get people excited on it when the new release or the new savior for the company is the Air Max DN that doesn't play on anything new yeah. or it's not really like an expression of what, innovation. Yeah. What Nike forward thinking, what Nike does best. It's just kind of like a, a rejuggling of Things Something that, we've known about. But, for but also, they years. don't look at the DN as a savior. No, no, but I think that, I, I think you're right. I don't think that Nike is touting DN as this high-level innovation performance product. But I don't think they're doing, but they're looking at it as like, this brand, this product is going to do significant business. A, a pillar, push, a pillar, yeah, a pillar for sure. for sure. But at the same time, I do think if you're thinking about what's the like newest, most exciting product right now, you do kind of go to DN and then you think, oh, that's just Air Max. What if the DN in the year, we see it on Instagram working out like the 270s? Then hey, if feeling? it happens, it happens. I still don't think that that satisfies what you really want from Nike okay. innovation-wise. Okay. I, I think the last good product in that lane is Super Shoes, is breaking two style carbon fiber mm. giant shoes for running marathons in. Mm. I, I We need something more from Nike. It used to be on this Olympic cadence where yeah. Yeah. You, you got flying it 2012 around the Olympics. This is an Olympic year. We. Would love to see some big new sneaker I mean, technology. Imagine, imagine if the Air Max DN is the podium shoe at the Olympics. Um, I could very easily see it being the metal stand shoe. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. One of the interesting figures that the BOF article mentioned is that uh, Nike's projected sales growth is just one percent for May Saw 2024, that. which is uh their worst performance in 25 years outside of the. 2009 where the economy was just terrible yeah, in general yeah. and then one of those pandemic years where everything looked shaky so 
again, Nike is the biggest brand in sneakers, and especially when it comes to sneakerhead collecting as a hobby, which is what we talk about. You know, we look at our year end list, and I do agree with Wealthy's frequent take that there are more varied sneaker tastes than there were before. But also, when you get down to the year end, I looked at the last two years, it's still like eight Nikes and two other shoes. So yeah. I think within our small subset of footwear consumption, it, it's going to take a lot more for Nike to fall off, mm-hmm. if we want to call it that. But I, I, I don't know. Is, is it? Can you say Nike's falling off or just that they're slowing down? I think that there's more competitors in a category that Nike prides itself on. Running. Performance innovation i think like we always say you always thought like go you walk walk out in times square right now you see tons of on mm-hmm. and i think that without getting into sales figures or you just gut check wow these shoes are all over these shoes are all over now you're seeing that there's actual obvious growth for these other companies but they have a long way to go nike's a juggernaut of course you're, you're nike's not gonna... a juggernaut but there's been changes in I, I you know and I, I leave it up to maybe the audience how are the jordan ones selling that two years ago in the pandemic that res- resale stores were just getting every different mm-hmm. color i couldn't even keep track yeah i couldn't keep track and they were moving moving how that but slowed how long down can you rely on retro that's what product I'm saying. like that well, I just that's think, what i'm saying i just think the industry as a whole you know when we talked about here endless times where it's like there was a certain like five year span where the industry just depended on Air Jordan 1 retro mm. and Yeezy 350. Mm. Yeah. That was like the bulk of like going into a resale shop and those are like the two in in dunks. Yeah. Those three shoes were just those were sneakers. If you were into sneakers, you were into those three shoes. Now it's like that's not the case anymore. You know, where it's like the the mold has been broken open. Yeah. There are other competitors out there and I remember back in the day uh there was this brand i think it was para i think a para made a t-shirt with this brand called rockwell Mm -hmm. and it was sold on digital gravel or something like that and i I always thought about this sentiment that they said in the the t-shirt said the fear of not wearing nike and i think that that's real for a lot real for a lot of people back then and even up to current day where it's like hey a lot of people are just like so programmed that like if I'm a sneakerhead and we're guilty of it too. Yeah, I wear Nikes. Think about it. What's the where what's the place where a lot of us found sneaker culture? Nike Ni- talk. Nike talk. Nike talk. Yeah. yeah. You didn't come on there to like there was a New Balance thread, but you came on there cuz you like Nikes and being in the Nikes made you a sneakerhead. Yeah. And, the, and Nike leaned into that and yeah. capitalized on that, I think in a way that other brands weren't in the early 2000s. Yeah, and I feel like you know 2010s, you know, you did see little sprinkles of a Ronnie Feige A6, mm-hmm. a Concepts New Balance, but it was still like niche, yeah. you know? Yeah. It was sporadic. Yeah. And it, an A6 Gel NYC or 1130 isn't going to be on the same level as Air Jordan 11. No. But no. Y- you can be in the sneakerhead uh, discussion now wearing those shoes and nobody's going to like question you about yeah. it or just change so much. Let me ask this. If we think that Nike is slowing down or falling off or however you want to depict it, do we think that this lull has Nike further behind than it did around 2016 when Adidas was really crushing it? Do you think that Nike is in a better place now than it was at the peak of mid-2010s Adidas power? Wait, 2010s? I think those are two different questions. Okay. I think that Adidas... I just say it because that was the last time when we saw Nike Actually, looking I shaky. Thought, I don't Free think off so. White, no, when, I when thought about that the other Kanye day. Kanye arrived and Ultra Boost this, Yeezy 750, Yeezy 350, NMDs was, causing stampedes at malls. I thought that was bigger than this challenge. Could be wrong, but I think Yeezy Boost, Yeezy to Adidas during that time where yeah. everyone was wearing Ultra Boost. And Under Armour was still kind of hot. I think that that was bigger. That was more of a competitive... Wait market to nike than this is right now damn you just validated my whole argument from a couple weeks ago or i got what? roasted for saying that the yeezy one that everyone was on adidas for a minute no no one said that what i didn't roast you for that neither did i remember we had the whole argument about the kanye yeezy one 
about the Yeezy Two? No, Yeezy Two. That's not the same argument. I, I don't. I'm not connecting He's the saying, dots. No, the argument was if the Yeezy Two was the number one shoe of the year, which I still think of. Oh. I'm talking about the pod. <laughs> it's like, damn, you're no, we just didn't. No, the whole we didn't. Argument? No, but I think that that boost Yeezy to Adidas moment was more of a threat than this is now. Here's the thing, though. That boost few years, not Yeezy, the, didn't last that long. Yeah. These yeah. companies. Well, they ran out of. These like, companies have maybe the trajectory to last. The smaller ones, the ons, the hokas. on, or, or even you just see like not to just like always, always hop on them, but I feel like the biggest difference is is that I know that New Balance isn't in the same spot that Adidas is, mm. but there was kind of this thing where it was like okay, Adidas had their moment right, and every single year they were going to come out with like a different. They're like, oh, we need a different shoe. It was Stan Smith, then it was Ultra Boost, big then, franchise, then it was NMD. And then it was EQT, and then you're like, oh, but EQT didn't yeah. hit the same as whatever. And then you got to derupt and all this other stuff that like yeah. none of it took off, right? But New Balance has gone, okay, it's the 990 V4. Okay, now it's the 990 V5. Now it's the 992. Now it's the 993. Mm -hmm. Now it's the 2002R. Now it's the 1906. Yeah. And it's like, wait. A lot of, lot of models. But like each year, you think that like okay, this model got kind of played out. They where are they going to drop yeah. next? That's going to take off, and it doesn't really feel like it's tailing off. Yeah, I also think that there are non-product reasons why Nike could be challenged. I mean, look, job cuts are coming at Beaverton, yeah. and that's something that people are worried about. But you know, talent is leaving anyway, and Nike wants everybody to come back to the office. We're in this new environment where people expect to be able to work remotely and live where they want to, and not that many people want to live in Portland, want to go to Beaverton every day, and Nike has this big push to bring everybody back in office, and I think things like that is going to make it harder for them to retain talent and be a world-class company in terms of design. I, yeah, I think that I mean, it's going to be harder for them. Not even going there, and we can go on to after this, but I just remember like when we went to Portland recently for Bema's thing, and I yeah. spent like what three four days there and i'm yeah. like this is the most miserable place yeah there. no oh, wow. no wow, portland wow. hate from you i'm not no, gonna take that no it's one of the <laughs> no. it's one of the worst places <laughs> in the country no no i won't allow that uh, i won't allow that uh, last thing we gotta touch on yes can, there's so much oh yeah i could go on about this yes. for so long well, it's up to you can no we, no no can we can we talk about the the usher fours yes usher fours another super bowl moment but this of, one, we, I think we is, said there was a lot of sneaker moments. This, this one's a lot Sunday. more interesting. Very. Interesting. I don't want to say this is interesting, more interesting than uh, Jay Z, et cetera, From like a strictly sneaker, it depends where you where you where you come yeah. at. Because some people, like we said before, oh, is a Jay Z Reebok going to sell out to a new audience? Well, it's like an Air Jordan Four is a bigger shoe than a Jay Z Reebok. Absolutely. It just it is what it is on every level. So Usher comes out. Does this super mega performance, changing outfits, doing his flawless whole, whole? Did you throw the skates on to mimic? The no, I don't have any. Um, <laughs> but comes out uh, in a pair of silver Air Jordan chrome. Yeah, chrome silver color because he yeah, has. Yeah. People know in the past Usher yep. great relationship with Jordan brand mm -hmm. has this whole line of gold. Yeah. Yeah. Air Jordan PEs, which are insane. Yeah. Ridiculous footwear. Air Jordan 3, all gold. Yeah. Air Jordan 11, all gold. Like, yeah, when I asked him about he, on Sneaker Shop, I was like, how do you get, how'd you get them? He's like, not everyone has Jordan on speed he, dial. He, he, trin <laughs> he, he, he Trinidad James them, all yes. gold, everything. Yes, yep. yes, yes. Uh, but he comes out in a silver pair, which is clearly a nod to the gold. To, on the Usher design language. Yeah, but I think it's also meant to look like the Vince Lombardi trophy, the Super yeah. Bowl trophy. It's got the U on the back. Yeah. Very if, cool. It, to me, it just felt like, okay, he has the gold ones, now he has the Flip silver it to ones. The silver, yeah. yeah. It's based off of the military blue fours, which the OG pair is coming back. Interesting. Didn't know that. You didn't see the shoe? I did, but I didn't make that connection. I made more of the connection oh. that he's into metallics and it was just... Oh, Magic. but it's also the military blue four. It has the blue hits. On okay, the color blocking is it? Yeah. yeah. So that shoot like all uh, Eminem wore the fire red yeah. threes with yeah. the Eminem Slim Shady thing. That was the shoe that was also re releasing that year for yeah. them. So it's like kind of like a pre hype moment for a retro that's gonna be coming later on. Makes sense with the Usher on the back. But we're like, hey, is this a PE? Is this a custom sneaker? And then the shoe surgeon posts. The shoes online with yeah. the briefcase. The briefcase with the handcuff. 
Imagine running <laughs> off with that. <laughs> no, he had the security with him. It uh, was a confusing moment. It was confusing. We couldn't tell for sure if Jordan Brand made the shoes, yeah. if the shoe surgeon made the shoes, if it was some mixture of both. And it turns out the answer is that both. Jordan Brand designed the shoes, but the shoe surgeon, Dom, produced the shoes. Yes. Jordan Brand couldn't get a full pair done for Usher in time for the Super Bowl because partly the Lunar New Year will always slow things down in Asia where Jordan makes their shoes. Got it. And so they tapped Surgeon to finalize a full pair. I think that maybe Jordan Brand could only get the one side of the shoe made or something like that. So they said, hey, can you help us out with this? Can you make these sneakers And they have for domestic Usher? factories where they can just make it here. Yeah, right there in LA, cook something up easy. They're pros at that. I think this is an awesome look for the shoe surgeon and for Dom. Definitely. I think this is a bit of a weird look for Jordan Brand if you can't make that sneaker in time. And I know there's a bunch of factors that play it into it. It was just confusing messaging behind it because at yes. first we were like, okay, he's wearing the Jordans, but then we saw this shoe surgeon post them and we're like, okay, he's wearing customs. Well, right. have we ever seen Jordan, Jumpman, repost any of the Canary off-white ones? Have we ever no. seen they reposted these? Yeah. Which is very interesting. Think of how many designs Shoe Surgeon has done that are takeoffs of very popular Jordan models. Yeah. On my show, I talk about it all the time. They've never reposted it. They don't really co-sign it. What's the difference here? The difference is here that he worked with them on the project. But it's also, it. I feel like it's much different if you're Usher in the sense that you're on the biggest stage. He comes out in that custom off-white so, yeah. And this isn't uh, and obviously this isn't meant to be slandered towards sh shoe surgeon at all. But it's like there's a difference between you're on the stage and you have Jordan Brand make you a PE one of one sneaker to wear for your performance and coming out in a pair of customs. Totally, those are two completely different. Like to the average person watching the show, they don't care, you know. But to the sneakerhead audience that you're trying to tap into doing this, the one of one PE is infinitely cooler and more memorable than a custom shoe. Even though the custom's still a 101, but that distinction yeah. is important. What does yeah. this mean going forward? Are I they don't know. Gonna work closely together? I mean, they've done it in the past where there was that moment, I think it was 2018 LeBron. where LeBron Did. broke the 30,000 mm -hmm. points mark and they had the gold pair of LeBron 15s mm -hmm. that shoe surgeon made for him. Yep. And again, I think this is always a good look for the shoe surgeon or Definitely. any customizer who gets to make a special pair for an athlete or an entertainer who's on a huge mm -hmm. stage like that. But the question for me is always, how is Nike not able to do this? We know Nike has more resources. I guess they just aren't as nimble as these smaller creators. But yeah. to me, if I were LeBron, if I were Usher, I'd be confused as to how that shoe wasn't ready in time or they didn't put it's all their brilliant moment, design minds it's also, together it's to also make it like happen. a big moment for not not your ego but like hey getting the true 101 design for you to wear on the stage it just it's a huge status symbol right but i don't know I if usher take. cares i don't I know if lebron cares that's my take I bet Usher doesn't care that much. <laughs> I don't know. Like, They're I still no special. Yeah. I, that's, some people, that's some, what I don't know. I some thinking. people maybe do, though. You know, I bet we care. I, I bet like we certainly care infinitely more than Usher or LeBron definitely. James. Okay. T to me, it to me it could be just as like this is the not costume design, but this is like what I'm yeah. wearing. You know? Yeah. But when again looking at it and then seeing what they had done in the past, you know, with the Eminem pair, Justin the, Timberlake. Yeah, yeah. It just looked. Just looking at the product, looking back at it, the more that we were thinking, like the more I was just sitting there staring at the product and the photo he had or the video where he's like looking at it over through like the uh, the window. Dom. I would, yeah. I was like, it just, it didn't look like his work, like in design language wise. You know what I mean? Like looking at it, like he's typically known for like taking a retro shoe and like putting high end fabrics on it and like Python, et cetera. And then seeing the flip like the chrome flip on a military blue which is a shoe upcoming in jordan's retro lineup range that they want to promote with the usher logo replacing the jump man on the heel i'm like it just kind of you're just trying to figure out like who's the artist behind this you mm -hmm. know and it just like ev looking at it more and more it just pointed 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 to this is something that jordan brand sorry. is that jordan brand calling you right now sorry it's a spam call <laughs> <laughs> cool shoe cool moment Cool look, weird execution from Nike and Weird Jordan messaging. Brand. Yeah, but good Super Bowl overall, sneaker-wise, and I guess game-wise as well. I took home some money mm, from the betting snooze, apps. It was a snooze fest for... Uh, overtime. For the, the first game half, and then, and then it got great. Okay. Yeah, okay. 
I don't I don't think people are going to stick around for 50 more minutes of X's and O's. Yeah. Right here, so. Oh, uh, we're taking next week off, right? We will be. We will be. We'll be gone for one week, back yes. the next week. I think that's the general cadence we're on this year. It's kind of like five episodes here, one away. So mm-hmm. Especially that. with travel. We'll be at All-Star Weekend. Yeah. Hope to see some of you there. Have you guys been to Indianapolis before? I've never been to the state of Indiana. No offense to all the good people there, but I... I, I, I'm like, what's what's happening there? What what is? Yeah, I think it's my first time as well. What am I what am I looking for? Fill me in if you're listening to this. If you're watching, I think it'd be more hype to go on uh, in the peak era of an Indy 500 than oh, going to All Star okay. Weekend. I can do that. I could wear that fit to it. Oh yeah, <laughs> ready to go. Yeah. All right, everyone. This has been the Complex Sneakers Show. We hope everyone has a great weekend. Please like, subscribe. We will see you in two weeks.